to Team Keep It Clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question that we answer in a video like this. If you want to be a part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, y'all can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, go to patreon.com slash engravenviz and shout out to all of y'all that are Team Keep It Clean patrons. I appreciate it. And if you don't, that's fine too. No issues, no worries, no problems. We got some great questions as we always do. And the first one, it comes from me. So like I said, the very first question on this episode came from yours truly. And it is a question to all Ravens fans about somebody who used to actually be a Raven. One Zadarius Smith. Ooh, the one that got away. And the question is, should the Ravens, if... The Packers do end up releasing him because, you know, it's the season of emojis and the eyes and scrubbing everything off your Instagram. Hey, that's the reason for the season, because free agency is around the corner. And Zadarius Smith, he wiped all his Packer stuff off. Last time he did this was when he was with the Ravens and he wiped all his Raven stuff off when he was getting ready to make that transition into free agency. We knew he was going to be a free agent. He knew he was going to be a free agent. We knew the Ravens weren't going to sign him. Ravens didn't re-sign him. And then he ended up going to the Packers. And oh, when we watched him in that Packers uniform, we saw him go off. We watched him do his thing and it was like, man, even though we knew that the Ravens were not going to re-sign him, still wanted them to. Hope they did, but we just knew. But should the Ravens bring back an old friend, bring back somebody who did his thing, especially in his last year when he got more and more playing time? Now, um, should they? I think that they should. I don't think they will, but I think that they should. Now, um, one of the reasons that I feel like they should, why not? He missed most of last season. Uh, I forgot what the injury was, but he, he missed the majority of last year. So the Packers, they got to see what life was like without Zadarius Smith. Um, and they, they did pretty good. Now, of course, they could have been even better with a Zadarius Smith, uh, but they got to see what life is like without him. And it had been widely speculated, or it has been widely speculated, that he will be a cap casualty. Uh, so... One thing you know about these Ravens, they love their compensatory picks. Woo, they love them comp picks. Um, and some of them comp picks have worked out. Some of the comp picks have not worked out. But either way, they love the comp picks because it's an extra pick. Uh, and it's, it's based off of a player that went out somewhere else and got a nice deal. And you ended up getting a pick in return for that player signing a deal elsewhere. Now... On the reverse side, the flip side of the comp pick formula, if you sign a player in, the, in a certain time period in the beginning of free agency from another team, then that will go against any comp picks that you could get. So, but this is why it's Darius Smith. If he does end up being cut by the Green Bay Packers, he wouldn't count against the comp pick formula. Oh, it would be such a sweet thing. Now, one thing that I think will go against the Ravens, in my opinion, money money i think that that would literally be the only thing that would stop this thing from happening would be money because we know he certainly knows but we know that zadarius smith even if the ravens were interested in having just reuniting him with the team and shout out to patrick queen because zadarius smith he put his little eyes emojis up yesterday then Patrick Queen, he quote tweeted that. Then Marlon Humphrey, he quote tweeted that. And it just started going all around Ravens flock on Twitter. Everybody was like, ooh, just thinking about it. And it would be nice. But um, the thing with Darius Smith, he knows, like, like we all do, that he could get much more money elsewhere other than the Ravens. Um, and I wouldn't be mad at that. And it's the same way with Bradley Bozeman, I feel, too. And I think that's that's going to be the one where, again, a lot of Ravens fans want they they want to resign Bradley Bozeman. We would all love for Bradley Bozeman, Bozeman to resign, but I don't think it's happening. But anyway, we can talk about Bradley Bozeman later. But with Zadarius Smith, man, um, Zadarius Smith, we haven't got to see this scheme yet because we have a new defensive coordinator. But it's expected 
that he is going to let his pass rushers be pass rushers. So they're going to get a significant, a real opportunity to actually rush the passer. So before, like when you would think about it, think about a free agent pass rusher coming to the Ravens, you may be like, oh, it would be great to have him. It would be nice to have him. But how good will he be in our scheme? How much will he really eat in our scheme? And one thing that we tend to think about, or me, myself personally, is can he overcome the scheme? Because for some pass rushers, that you ain't going to just be able to just rush the passer and that's it. You're going to be dropping back. You're going to be doing quite a few different things. And we know, like, with the Ravens, they love – it seems like with their edge guys, the, fir the first priority, you got to be able to stop the run. That's their first priority. If you can stop the run, hey, you, we love you already. That's, that's what Ravens' MO has been when it's come to their pass rush. Or their edge guys, their edge guys. And then I think second is rushing a passer. That's what it seemed like. That's why, well, Yannick Ngakwe, he was not a good run stopper. It was not a good fit. And then he, he talked about, he talked about with the scheme too. But we ain't got to get into that. Uh, but with Darius Smith, if, the, if it could happen, it would be great. It'd be lovely. It, it would be a, a nice welcome home. And then that would allow uh, Tyus Bowser. They do play different positions, but it would allow Tyus Bowser to, hey, Tyus, take your time. Even though you know Tyus is thinking, you know he got he got to be thinking in the back of his mind like, man, I, I got to get back out there quick because I know the NFL stands for not for long. And, hey, if there's somebody out, like, like think about this scenario with Tyus Bowser. If he's not ready by the beginning of the season, I don't expect him to be, but maybe if he hits up the doctor that Cam Akers got, hey, who knows? But if he's not ready... By the beginning of the season, worst case scenario for him, uh, Ravens will obviously have to look to replace him, have somebody ready just in case Tyus Bowser is not. And, it's, you know, you know, what's so crazy is that the, it's a possibility that as bad as this season was when it comes to injuries, it can impact next season, too. It has a possibility of impacting next season, too. Ugh, this season was so nasty when it comes to everybody getting hurt. Um, but. With Tyus Bowser, he got to be thinking like, man, I don't want nobody taking no food off of my plate. I don't want nobody taking my spot because it's happened before and it's going to happen again. And not just even talking about Tyus Bowser, but that is life in the NFL. What injuries do, they take away somebody's opportunity and they also provide somebody else an opportunity. That's how so many spots get taken. That's that's usually how the quarterbacks get shifted or that's how you usually with the quarterbacks you go from one quarterback to the next that's that's what the transition usually is it's usually with an injury and it and that can be for really any position not just quarterbacks if somebody gets hurt the starter gets hurt backup comes in oh backup oh you ain't so bad oh okay go ahead do your thing and that's all she wrote but with Tyus Bowser we hope that he can be ready but one thing that we hope the Ravens don't do like they did with a Ronnie Stanley, like they did with a Nick Boyle, like they did with a Derek Wolf. Don't rush him. Don't rush him. Play the long game. Do not rush him. Oh, I was scared they were going to do that with Lamar Jackson. When they had him at that practice and he was all hobbling and limping around, I was thinking, oh, no, don't rush him, please. It's not worth it. Let this season be what this season was. Don't rush it. And I am so glad that they didn't. And you see with the Packers, like Ravens need to take a note in Packers book because Jair Alexander was looking like he was going to be gone for the season. But they were like, oh, no, hold up. We'll, we'll put you on injury reserve. We'll see if you can come back. He ended up coming back for the playoffs. David uh, Bak Bakhtiari. He was out for, I think, the majority of the year. I think he came, but did he come back in the playoff game? But either way, these were some of their best players. And then, like we've been talking about, Zadarius Smith. He was out for the majority of the year. So they were willing to, they, they held the, their best players out. And there was some talk that, oh, man, they could have they came back sooner. But you, just, you don't want to rush anything. It's tempting because, hey, this is one of our best players. This is one of our guys. It's one of our stars. But you got to play the long game. So with Zadarius Smith, um, all that time off that he had, and then he came, he came back and looked good. He came back, even got a sack in, the, uh, in, in his first game, in the playoff game, 
And, yeah, the, the playoff game didn't go their way. But, yeah, man. So he showed, like, hey, I'm here. But if the Packers do end up releasing him, uh, I don't think he's going to be saying, hey, I'm here when it comes to the Ravens. I would like it. But I just, I don't see it happening. But, hey, crazier things have happened. But he's going to be very sought after uh, on the market if he does get released. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Zadarius Smith. Um, man, I just, every time I think about him and thinking about him with the Ravens, uh, I get reminded of that Titans game where they were just sacking Mar Mar Marcus Mariota left and right. And Zadarius Smith just knew. He knew he was, get, he was getting ready to break the bank because he looked at the camera after one of those sacks and went like this. And I was like, oh, boy, yeah, he, he's gone. He's out of there. So, anyway, I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I don't know why I'm saying it's like this, the end of the video, but let's go to the next question. All right, so the first outside question, it came from my guy, Martin, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, Engraven, hope all is well with you. Uh, I was looking at wide receiver group, thinking about how the coaching staff has wasted all this potential, but thinking about how this is on the receivers. All wide out scored only two touchdowns after week seven. I really like these guys, but maybe it's time to explore new options. But then again, how much better would they be with a different coaching staff? I don't know. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I also started asking myself this because of all the wide receivers potentially hitting the free agent market, such as Michael Gallup, Devontae Adams, Chris Goodwin, and Mike Williams. We have, I think, seven wide receivers, if I'm not mistaken. If we wanted to bring someone on, uh, we would have to take someone off. I don't think it's realistic to have seven or eight wide receivers every year on the active roster. Sorry if maybe this wasn't as Team Keep It Clean as far as talking about the wide receiver group, but I just wanted to ask and get yours and Team Keep It Clean opinion on it. That's a good question. Um, Ravens uh, right now on the active roster uh, is Hollywood, Bateman, Prochet, Duvernay, Wallace, Boykin. So that's six. Um, it was Sammy Watkins too, but you know they, they're not re-signing him. Um, and I don't even think he would even really want to come back. But um, so, yeah, I think this will unfortunately be the year uh, where they do get rid of Miles Boykin. Um, I, I, I would love to see him somewhere else and see him with like a real opportunity. I don't think he got a real opportunity with the Ravens. Um, it just didn't get a consistent opportunity. Uh, he didn't really get that real chance to really get on the same page. Um, but I, I think it'll just, they are just going to move on. Uh, I think, and I, I've been telling people this, I do think that the Ravens, uh, a, a sneaky pick for them in the draft in the first three rounds could be wide receiver. I, I, I really do believe that. Um, because I, I just feel like they'll try to get somebody who got some good size, good speed, and is aggressive that's going to go up and get it, that's going to fight for it, fight for the ball, fight for extra yards, fight for just, that's going to fight. You ain't got to throw no hands with nobody, hopefully not, but just somebody with some real aggression. Um, and I, I think that they're going to be looking for that again. Now, I know they got Pro there. They still got Duvernay. They still got Tylen Wallace as well. Um, but I, I, I really do believe, I think they're going to do that. Um, but anyway, as far as the, the, the free agent market, uh, well, first, the, the first part of your question about the coaching staff, um, that is a good question because this coaching staff, as we know, uh, in the long run, um, they haven't really consistently gotten great production out of wide receivers. Now, uh, they had spurts here and there. They certainly have, but consistently it hasn't been a good spot for wide receivers now uh one of the reasons for that uh one, well, one of the contributing factors was how they they would technically draft some guys but they would sign a lot of veterans that would take those guys spots and under eric da costa uh it seems as if he's trying to change that he's trying to make an adjustment to that to where ah uh, no we ain't trying to have a whole bunch of veteran wide receiver let's let's really grow our own guy let's develop our own guys and I, I appreciate that I appreciate the fact that he's really been uh, trying to do that love it still do wish he would have got DeAndre Hopkins but that that's that's fine it's okay 
Um, but I, I do appreciate that he's been trying to go younger and really like, cause, cause if you draft your own guys, um, and then you're, you're forced and, and you don't sign a bunch of outside wide receivers, then you're forced to have to really develop your own guys. Um, and I do, appre- I did appreciate a lot too, how they, they, they saw the issue. Then they brought in some help for the issue with, with T Martin and Keith Williams. They were like, hold up, these guys, they, they know some stuff about the development of the wide receivers. And we did see improvement. We did see improvement with our wide receivers. Um, now, we, of course, when Lamar went out, like, yeah, a lot of that went down. But we, we did still see some improvement. So hopefully next year, uh, with an improved offensive line, uh, Lamar making improvements, Greg Roman making improvements, the receivers making improvements. Hopefully everybody can continue making improvements and they can continue making steps forward. Uh, as far as some of the guys you mentioned, because um, he said he wanted to get, get thoughts on, uh, on it because of all the wide receivers potentially hitting the free agent market. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll go for like any of these guys. They would all be nice, like Michael Gallup. Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Mike, they, they would all be nice. Well, Mike Williams, he'd be nice. I, I really like him as a wide receiver, but only thing is just the, the injuries, man. That, that, that's the only thing with him that will bother me. But those, those guys, those are some nice receivers, and I'm sure there's some more uh, that we didn't even name. But I just, I don't see them signing any of those guys. Most thing I can see them doing is signing somebody, like, for training camp. Just a, like an extra body or something like that. You still got the practice squad guys, too. Um, but I don't see them making any significant moves in free agency for uh, at wide receiver. I just, I, I really don't. I think they're going to let um, their guys be their guys. Uh, Hollywood, Bateman, and that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That ho, ho, Well, based off what I'm thinking happens, nothing is set in stone, but... Right now, Hollywood is the oldest wide receiver on the team. And as a Ravens fan, like, hearing something like that, it's like, what? Uh, a fourth-year receiver, the oldest wide receiver on the team? Unless I'm missing somebody. No, I ain't missing nobody. That's, cr- that's crazy when you think about it. That is insane. Insane. So, it's just uh, something to think about. But, I, like I said, I, I do feel like um, Eric DeCosta has been – he been making that shift, and, and I, I I do love the shift. The shift has come with some struggles, but it's you you gotta go through that to in order to get where you want to go, in order to improve, in order to get better in an area where you're not comfortable at, where things haven't been so good. You gotta be willing to go through that struggle. So, I I appreciate the Ravens' struggle at wide receiver, um, what it's been. Um, cause I, if anybody that's been on the channel for the past couple of years, I remember after, uh, well, I think, was it after 2019 or was it after 2018? I, for, I forgot what year it was. It was either after 2018 or after 2019, but I had said, I, I was saying that I would not mind if the Ravens even like, they just went all rookies for wide receivers that they really, they really went young. Like all guys that they drafted, I said that a couple years ago, um, because and I was willing for the season not to be so pretty. I was willing for the season not to look so good, uh, but they, but for just for them to make that transition, because I wanted them to come off of just always signing the veteran wide receiver. Like if you sign a wide receiver in their prime, something like okay, oh, all right, no problem, cool. But that's not what the Ravens would do. They will sign these veterans that's way past their prime. Way, like way past. They will get the guys in like the, the second, third wave of free agency. The, the guys that either got cut or guys that nobody was really messing with like that. They go, oh, okay, cool. Hey, you're available. Hey, come through. But again, Eric DeCosta, he's like, no. But I wanted them to be like, no, don't do that anymore. Um, and they seem to be on that path. So we'll see how this season goes when it comes to the wide receiver. Ooh, this this offseason is just it's so fun. And it's only the beginning. We're not even in the new league year yet. We're not even a week away for, a week removed from the Super Bowl yet. We almost are. We've got six six days, but ain't even a full week removed from the Super Bowl. 
So anyway, we'll see how things go. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all, and y'all stay up. Um, be good to yourselves. Oh yeah. Gotta made it. Gotta made it. Well, that's my homie. Ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Shout out to graven.